Hey there, I've got a question for you. You ever notice that when you watch a movie, the characters in it somehow survive these god-awful injuries that we as normal human beings could no way in real life possibly survive? Rev up those fryers, cause I am sure hungry for one- Help! Help! My leg! Can't you see we're closed? Well, you ever ask yourself why this happens? Yeah, the answer is pretty simple when you stop to think about it. You see, filmmakers are stupid. But all of those things aside, I wanted to bring this topic up because it's interesting to me and those other people who are obsessed with films, and if you're watching this channel, there's a good chance that you might be one of those people too. So today, I have compiled a list of several interesting injuries in movies, let's say, that I don't believe human beings, as we exist today in real life, would be able to survive, at least not without some serious, remarkable, life-altering, um ailments coming from it. With that being said, you are watching Heroic Tales TV. I am your host, Doc, and let's get right into the list. Alright, John Wick. Let's start off with everyone's favorite assassin. So, John Wick has no shortage of intense action scenes in his film, but there's one in particular that really pushes the limits of believability, at least in my opinion. In this scene, John Wick takes a barrage of bullets at point-blank range before plummeting from a rooftop to the pavement below. Now, I don't remember the exact circumstances of this situation and if it's explicitly shown if Wick is wearing a bulletproof vest or not, but let's say that he is, just for argument's sake. Taking shots like that at point-blank range, even while wearing a bulletproof vest, is still going to be incredibly painful and incredibly dangerous. At point-blank range, the impact alone can cause some serious internal injuries, um, including to your internal organs and might cause internal bleeding. Not to mention the bullets in the vest are going to be incredibly hot, and along with that, the force alone is probably going to knock you on your ass. Now, let's not forget, Keanu Reeves, who is playing the character, is 60 years old. There are some 60-year-olds who can't survive a slip in the bathroom let alone a multi-story fall from the top of a building. So, is this believable? Is this survivable? I suppose anything is possible, but the way Wick just kind of shakes it off and is able to continue with the movie is absolutely unbelievable, in my opinion. Let's talk about Robert Pattinson's recent portrayal of the Cape Crusader in The Batman. Now, while this movie delivered some truly epic action scenes, there's also one particular moment that left me scratching my head. In this scene, Batman decides to glide off of a towering structure using his trusty wingsuit, I guess? Um, it's definitely weird. Can someone explain to me where he was actually keeping this suit on him? Because it just, watch the scene in slow-mo, like it just kind of seems to appear. Um, I don't know. Now, that aside, Batman is using a wingsuit to um, glide across the city. So an average wingsuit can easily exceed 100 miles per hour, so it's pretty much like being propelled forward by a car. Um, this wouldn't be a huge issue if Batman then didn't bonk his head on the overpass like a big silly. Um, this injury is so nasty, uh, I can't even vocalize it properly. I mean, we're talking cranial contusions, concussions, probably some severe head trauma that is going to cause later dementia or, you know, what's the shit that football players get? Yes, I guess I am. That may be, Stewie, but if I were you, I'd stay off the field. Concussions are the number one problem in football today. Recent brain scan studies have shown... That brain injuries are directly linked to dementia and suicides in former players. Yet the league! You can play the music louder, but you can't silence the truth! Yeah, that one. I'm gonna play this scene here again and try to break down a lot of the injuries that you would probably sustain in real life going through this. First of all, you got your blood force trauma. Batman's head hitting the overpass and then landing back first on a car would result in a significant amount of blood force trauma. This can severely injure the brain, spine, and other internal organs. Whiplash effect. The impact of landing on the car and then being thrown forward onto the pavement like that would subject Batman to the whiplash effect, which is a sudden and violent motion that causes serious neck and spinal injuries. Thankfully though, Batman is in peak human condition and he has a bat suit on, so if anyone could survive this injury, I suppose it would be him, right? Indiana Jones, ah, good old Indy. In Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull, our fearless protagonist finds himself in quite a predicament. 
he's trapped in an artificially constructed city, which is about to be nuked. So what does he do? Well, he hops into a lead-lined refrigerator, hoping to ride out the blast. So this wouldn't work for a number of reasons. First of all, um, the heat generated from a nuclear bomb is so incredibly immense. The temperature at the center of a nuclear explosion can reach temperatures in the tens of million degrees in Fahrenheit. So that's hot enough to vaporize almost anything in its vicinity, including a lead-lined fridge and Indy inside, of course. So the idea that Indy could survive a blast simply by hiding inside a fridge is, well, it's a bit far-fetched if you ask me. But it doesn't just stop there. After surviving the nuclear blast, he is propelled forward by the explosion. And yet, despite being like 70 years old at the time of filming this, Harrison Ford's character is able to walk away without a scratch. Now, Indy is tough, but surviving a nuclear blast and being blown through the air? Come on, even the world's most seasoned archaeologist needs some serious plot armor to get out of that situation. The Fast and the Furious franchise has never been known for its subtlety, that's for sure. But Fast Five takes action to a whole new level. In one scene that defies all logic, Dominic and Brian drive a car off a cliff into a river. Not only do they survive the fall, but they also manage to swim to safety without any apparent injuries. Now, let's break this down just a little bit deeper. First, the sheer height of the cliff would make survival unlikely. Even if the car somehow managed to enter the water without breaking apart and killing everyone when that happened, uh, the impact alone would probably be fatal. Uh, let's put aside the fact that cars are not designed to withstand such forces, um, but the occupants themselves are not designed to withstand such forces. If by some miracle that they survived hitting the water, it would be like them feeling the pain of hitting concrete. So the surface tension of the water um, makes it, it makes it hard when you hit it, essentially. It's not going to be a light landing. It's not going to be like jumping in a pool, which is what a lot of movies seem to think it does. But no, again, it's like hitting a concrete floor. And as you can see, it's for you people out there saying that, oh, well, the car might have broke the surface tension as it went in first. Again, the car would probably have broken apart in all actuality, but go back and look at the scene. One of them definitely does not land in the area where the car breaks the surface tension. So that one alone is at least getting creamed, right? In Mission Impossible Fallout, Ethan Hunt finds himself in yet another impossible situation. This time, he performs a high altitude, low opening, or a halo jump from a plane. As if that wasn't risky enough, during the jump he is struck by lightning, which causes his oxygen supply to malfunction. Now let's talk about why this scenario is so implausible. First, a halo jump involves jumping from a height of around 30,000 feet and free falling for a long distance before opening the parachute. At such heights, the air is thin and temperatures are extremely cold, posing a serious risk to the jumper. Secondly, being struck by lightning is incredibly dangerous, even for somebody on the ground, let alone for someone in midair. The electrical discharge can cause severe injuries, including cardiac arrest, burns, and neurological damage. Finally, a malfunctioning oxygen supply at that high altitude can lead to hypoxia, which is a condition where the body is deprived of oxygen. This can result in disorientation, confusion, and ultimately a loss of consciousness. Despite all of these challenges, Ethan Hunt not only survives the halo jump and the lightning strike, but he also manages to complete this mission. Of course, this is just a testament to the movie's commitment to high octane action, even if it means stretching the bounds of believability. Either way, it sure did make for a pretty damn cool scene, if you ask me. Alrighty, folks, that's all we have for this video. I'm still trying out some new methods, new lights, um, different things with audio and uh, a bunch of other shit I'm just trying to test out and figure out. I know this video is a little bit shorter, but as I've been waiting for different things and trying to learn different things, um, the videos that I have planned that are longer, I have not been able to complete yet. So there are things in the work, but I at least wanted to put out this shorter video and kind of test the style that I'm looking to do, kind of move away a little bit just from the behind the scenes talking and maybe make it more of a sort of talk show. I don't know. Like I said, I'm still figuring a lot of things out. Let me know what you guys thought about it in the comments below. Do you like this format? Should I ditch it? Should I go back to the other ones? Regardless of that, thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and leave a comment. I look at all the comments. It's always very fun to go through the comments. Uh, I try to like and reply to as many people as I can think of a funny reply to, you know, get to them. But with all of that being said, again, I've been Doc. This is Heroic Tales TV, and I'll see you guys next time.